I remember one of the first uh, celebrations I was at here in Toronto was a Mass at St. David's in Maple. Uh, it was a celebration for the Carmelite sisters that worked next door. And uh, when I was celebrating the Mass, I looked out, and uh, here were 30 to 40 young religious. And that's something that, well, it just couldn't happen in Hamilton. We don't have that many young religious. Um, you know, going to the Chancery Office and, and meeting the different uh, heads of the different departments uh, and hearing about their ex expertise and, 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 and just uh, having the opportunity to hear from them uh, their knowledge and their ex experience and what they had to offer to the Archdiocese uh, was marvelous. Um, finding out that I had to do a minimum of seven confirmations at St. David's and Maple because even then it was standing room only. Um, these are things that uh, just struck me uh, about the Archdiocese and how big and diverse uh, and, and wonderful uh, it is. But the other side of that, uh, as Moses points out to the people in the first reading, and Jesus points out in the Gospel, is it brings with it a great responsibility. We as a society uh, are, are moving further and further away from our Christian roots and from our natural law roots. And uh, Toronto is a place where, because it's metropolitan, uh, a lot of those movements start or are very present, but it's also the, the, the stage or, or the battlefield on uh, which we're challenged as people of faith to stand up and be counted. And even how we stand up to be counted is so very important. Uh, we need to stand up with dignity. Uh, we need to stand up uh, with respect. Uh, we need to be respectful of those people that aren't respectful of us or our opinions, or we're no better than them. Uh, we need to politely, uh, but firmly say what we believe, and we need to live it. Uh, if, we do, if we don't live it, uh, it's a scandal. Uh, it does us no good. Uh, yesterday, the second reading of the reading of office, uh, the Office of Readings uh, spoke about how uh, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving are one, and how um, fasting is the soul of prayer, and almsgiving is the lifeblood of fasting. And I was struck uh, again about how true that is. Um, for our prayer, for us to even pray in our society, we have to fast. Uh, we have to say no to other things because our society is so busy. Uh, that's important for us as individuals in living out our vocation, but it's also what we have to try to get across again and again and again to our people, that need to pray. And, and that need to pray means that we need to fast from other things, that we need to try to simplify our life in a, in a, in a world that's so cl uh, cluttered, where there's so many demands. And if we aren't giving alms, if charity, mercy uh, isn't uh, present in us, manifestly present uh, in us, well then the fasting and prayer um, doesn't mean anything. In fact, it becomes scandalous. Uh, often when we're fasting, when we're giving up things, that tends to make us edgy. Uh, and it's uh, sometimes harder for us to be as nice and as smiley as, as we should be. And yet, uh, that, that's got to be the fruit uh, of our fasting and our prayer, uh, or the fasting and prayer um, is not really um, effective uh, in our lives. And this is an ongoing challenge for each of us. Uh, and, and it's why I, I, I love Lent. I think it's a wonderful season. I, I, I love the... Uh, uh, first preface for Lent that talks about this joyful season of Lent. It, it really is a, a wonderful time for us to step back and to reevaluate and to start over. And uh, I was reflecting on the fact that uh, both times now that I've been called by the nuncio, uh, it's been just before Lent started, and uh, Lent uh, has figured very well into my plans to take on a new task. Uh, it, it's dovetailed uh, very well. And, um, you know, I, I think 
It's very important for us as individuals and again in, in, our, in our ministry to our people to try to again and again get them to see that uh, Lent isn't just one season of a year. It, it is one season of the liturgical year, but it, it, it's a season that, that, that really helps us focus on the fact that we are a pilgrim people, that always we are supposed to be living in a Lent of preparation, uh, a Lent of, of, of growing uh, to, um, to a readiness for heaven, to a readiness uh, to be called home, to a readiness so that when we are presented with that opportunity to go to God, we'll be at peace and we'll be joyful and, and we'll be anxious to make that journey through the gateway that we call death. Uh, it's, it's a great challenge, and it's a challenge for each one of us. You know, the potential of the Archdiocese of Toronto, to some extent, is in its numbers, but that's really limited uh, in terms of, uh, that's, a, that's a quantitative thing, but the qualitative aspect is much more important. It's what all those numbers do individually. Uh, it's the, the sharing of their individual expertise and generosity, uh, the use of their gifts, whatever those gifts might be, and, and they vary from one to the other, but we all have them. And it's our using them as individuals. And that's the same for this very large diocese and for the very small diocese that I'm going to. Uh, my area of the country is known for its people's friendliness. Uh, no end of people have been saying to me, well, I, I don't know Newfoundland myself, but I've heard, heard wonderful things about the people. They'll make you feel welcome. They'll be very kind and, and generous. And that's a wonderful reputation for those people to have. And it's the reputation that, uh, well, I guess Toronto has enjoyed that reputation internationally as Toronto the good. And it's a reputation that we need to continue to work on and improve on as individuals in our continuing journey to the Lord. <laughs>